I suppose really what I got out of this course mainly was just the, the confidence to try new things and just try stuff out. Doesn't matter if you can't get it quite right, but give it a go. I searched for universities and then decided for Farnham. And uh, sort of with the thought in my head and why I went for digital screen arts was, uh, you know, the, the animation side of things, you know, like uh, just, uh, and I think the variety of the course. But the story for me was just make your own stuff and get it out there, get people to see it, be confident about it. I cut all my shorts into like a commercial, like 60 second reel, shot an intentionally more commercial short film and just sort of pitched myself and kind of managed to get in. I found a job on, funny enough, job site, um, which fit my core skills, core skills that I learned from being on this course, being and remembering I needed to push myself, push myself to research, push myself to, to come up with that better idea every single time. When you're at university, you sort of sometimes, you know, you know you're studying, you can, you cannot, whatever, you know. Um, I think when you get out there, uh, it's really important to sort of, you know, keep your vision and, 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 and keep on going and sort of, you know, always remember like what, you, what it is you want to do. And, um, and I think that's the most important thing and I think that's what will get you there. Um, and yeah, and so in terms of me where I am now, as I said, there's lots of sort of little projects I do. Uh, little corporates that I edit, you know, partly direct, even sort of produce, um, and I sort of started to run my own company. Um, again, doing little things. It's more as a you know sort of the business structure that that keeps me that keeps me um, that keeps my earnings up, and then um, I you know shoot and light. I've done three feature films. Small projects, uh, everything low budget, um, because I didn't, I never sort of went uh, through the route of assisting, which I think is a brilliant route, and uh, in some ways easier, in some ways more difficult. Uh, for me, it didn't happen that way. It happened, you know, just with shooting and just sort of growing a little bit on each job and doing a slightly bigger things every time, and you know. You know, doing a lot for free, and uh, and then you know the next job you get paid a bit, and then you know you sort of you sort of step up that way, and and then as I said, I have you know other ways of income, um, sort of in the corporate sector, but like we use it, um, and uh, you know the more boring jobs, but still very important to treat them as you know. Uh, as important, um, they deserve it as well, and uh, and I think if you you know see a potential in in any job that you do, I think you always will keep on learning, and I think that's yeah what I would say. Just like I'd say, amicability is really essential in this industry because I've seen people in companies. I've observed this because. Fortunately, the places I've been to, I get on really well with them, and, I've, I've, and, and as such, I've been going back to them on a freelance basis for years. And I've seen people that don't get on well with them. They don't very, they don't last very long. They're usually out within a couple of months. So that's essentially what you got to do. You got to like, and yeah, you know, if you don't like the place, if you go for a job interview and you don't like how they operate, don't be afraid to turn it down. Don't be afraid to just say to be hesitant, don't just, don't be afraid, because if you, if you are not feeling it, you don't have to, you can, because you know that there are going to be places out there, it's one of those things, you're going to be in that job for six, three, six, twelve months, maybe, to begin with, as you're building your experience, it's just one of those places, you got to feel it, if you feel like, if you feel like, yeah, I can get on with these guys, or there's potential here, Go for it. If you're feeling like, no, this is really not worth it, in terms of like, if it's like far too, you know, if it's just far, you know, if, if the pe person you're working for, you're just not feeling it, just don't be afraid to just look elsewhere. I decided that I wanted to just get an internship somewhere as a, as a way of kind of maybe meeting people and moving. So I, I worked for Vice, uh, which is like BBS.TV. Well, actually, it's not called that anymore, it's like Vice. Video. 
interestingly. Um, so I worked for them for six months doing like editing TV shows for them. Uh, and then through that, I met other clients. And then just, you know, so I was working for, say, Jägermeister and Top Man and people like that doing a lot of music content, like directing live performance shows and uh, like session, music sessions with bands, and, <coughs> like band interviews and this kind of thing. Well, so I had a story someone, actually I know them, and to your point of like, what do people like, um, he put on his CV that he can make a really good mojito. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, actually you know what, that's I what I got in the job. Yeah, I see yeah. 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 He, he put, I, I make a mean mojito. And every Friday he was making cocktails for the rest of the time he was running. But like, that's the kind of stuff you just got to shove in there and it, it makes people remember you. So learn how to make a mojito. What I've noticed is it's always good to have an appreciation about what other people on set do. So. I'm not saying, like, learn how to do everything. Have an understanding about what other people do. So that means you can at least think, okay, um, yeah, you can quickly think of, okay, how is an editor going to think about how this, how this is going to work or how will the director see this? So that means you could almost engage with them and you can have, like, some kind of relatability with other crew members. So you can kind of, like, work in a bit more in... Uh, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, more in sync. About the idea of unpaid internships and I know UCA doesn't um, doesn't support them we, we absolutely shouldn't because they're exploitative can I ask the panel who's worked for no money oh I have yeah. <laughs> but the thing is I, what I would say to that is you know only do that like don't ever work for a commercial production company for no money because they have money but if it's yeah but if it is a a short film that just about survives or even a feature you know whose director or writer director or you know producer has scraped together the money and you know you feel for the project and uh, or you want to shoot with the equipment or whatever it is you feel you can you get something from that I think there's no way, then there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. As long as you feel you get something out of it, maybe the contacts, maybe the experience, maybe whatever. Um, I think then there's no harm, and I think it it's it's education really. Hey guys, my name's Tom. Uh, I'm also pursuing cinematography. Um, one of the uh, most exciting things for me is the engagement with the director. And I was just wondering what it's like in the industry, um, the, your engagement with the, your cinematographers. The more experienced and older they are, the more chilled out they are. Um, that's definitely for, like, you know, it's their job. It's a really stressful job being a DOP, and you're flying around the world, which might sound great, but some of them, like, it's just, it's so taxing. It's such an extreme job to do. They almost have to learn a way of, doing it and conserve, conserving energy so it's like the panic goes off and they're not panicking and that's what I have noticed and what I've noticed the difference between the new guys and the guys who are older is this sort of just calmness to a more like an experienced DOP whereas a younger DOP might be not flappy but like there's energy going everywhere which is great because there's intensity but the older guys are really chilled out like I just worked with Bob Yeoman who shot all the Wes Anderson's films and he was the most chilled out man of the met, and it was great. I really liked it. What do you think about? Would you say that what you're doing is glamorous? Because it's like kind of it's what a lot of people would be aspiring to. Um, you know, I think having if you been start to think like that, or whatever. You I mean, I'm no, I'd just like to have your view you, on I what it feels like. Yeah. I don't think you can think about it like that because you'll fall into a trap, and you just have to stay focused and grounded on what it is you want to do because. Commercials are great, but I don't want to do them forever. So if you kind of start loving it too much and enjoying it too much, then you'll just fall into that and you'll just do that. Whereas I kind of want to keep making my own stuff. Like It is glamorous, but like, you don't want to get caught up in it. And there's cool things that go on and you get invited to. And it's fun, like going out to New York or wherever you're going to go and shoot stuff, it's fun. But you have to forget about that side of it because you've got a job to do. Would you say it's a clean industry? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. And as a director, what would your what would your role be? What do you have to? What particular skill would you have to have in the social setting? Um, this the the, the, diff, 
the difficult thing about being a commercials director is handling clients because it's not like you're making your own thing and you've got control you've got to swallow your ego and do what someone else tells you to do but still doing it in a way that looks good because their idea might be a bit funky um, so like, there's a lot of people skills necessary to work with a client um, for sure um, well, the, t the term sort of gets thrown around a lot in the industry. Like, it's, it's more, do you know what you know? And I know, sort of, to a certain degree, that's true. But especially, like, you guys obviously working fully in the industry now. How sort of, how do you find that genuinely relates to your job and how you work with other people? Does that have a big effect? Is it sort of, is it really all about connections or? What's the sort of divide you sort of have in the industry between that sort of? I, I didn't know anyone when I started because. My dad's a farmer, so he wasn't particularly hooked up. Um, but like, I believe I believe in that statement because you have to get to know people. So it is who you know, not what you know to an extent. But what you know gets you who you know. So sort of you just have to get to know. You do have to get to know people. Yeah. 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 No, I definitely agree with that because the people I've worked with, uh, they uh, they you start off uh, having to like really you have to prove to people quite a lot about what you can do. The thing is, though, so you gotta. It just means that whoever you meet, you gotta be on your A game. Like you gotta like just show everyone what you can do, even if it's someone that you don't. Just anyone that you come at, at work, just give one hundred and ten percent. I know it's a corny phrase, and I grant it, but it's true. If you just do that and you persevere, then you know there'll be those conversations where two, you know your two superiors are having a drink, and they'll say, "Oh, you know that guy. You know he he's well good. He'll be good on your project." Or if there are people scouting around, they need your help. Or Someone might go. Tell you what, come, you know, mm. come, come with me. Like during your lunch break, you know, we can have a chat. We can have a chat, or yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing a shoot. You want to come around? So it's just one of those things. Seize every, every opportunity that you can, because you can go onto that. You you can go with that contact. That contact will introduce you to his contacts, and then if you get on with that contact, that'll be another one to your bio. And then of course, as Kieran out. says, yeah. business cards. Yeah. I keep twenty on me at all times. Yeah, I think the most benefit I've had is like meeting people at festivals and all of a sudden you met them at a festival like six years ago when, you know, before you went to uni and they're actually someone who you, you might now work with so I found festivals really... Festivals, or if you're, if you're more into the arts then sort of openings and private views and that kind of thing as well so it's got a bit of aspiration for Jacob. Can I just say that as well, uh, in, my, in the summer between the first year and second year I think it was that I... I got like I was a runner for a documentary film director, and he was he was um, he was going out shooting things, and I was basically camera assistant whilst he was out there. And I learned so much from doing that. But, you know, obviously that's what I want to do, and you know there, there are so many different areas. Uh, but this it was just like that was where I actually learned a lot about how to actually shoot things, how to frame things, and all that kind of thing. I think that was really important. And also, yeah, it was very yeah, it was an eye-opening kind of experience that really. Kind of uh, informed my second and third years definitely. My 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 sp If you have a spare time activity that is quite creative as well, keep doing it mm. because don't give it up. Don't give it up because if you feel that's something you can enjoy, and you can then bring on to like in an interview say, I do this as well in my spare time. Not only does it show that you have an extra skill, but it also shows that in between jobs. You're not just like you're not just like sitting about, twiddling your thumbs, just like saying, "Oh, I wonder when a, I wonder when a job will come about." No, you don't do that. So it just it keeps you busy. It keeps you really on the ball, and also it's fun to do. It helps pass the time. The the time pass by, and it even and you might actually stumble across a skill you might not you might not have known you had or a proficiency. Greta, you had a question.